Israel and other imperialist states evacuated the White Helmet terrorists as the anti-Assad terror front is in its last days before defeat. The Al-Qaeda Ambulatory Service has been taken in by various NATO countries where they will be allowed to resettle. In a final act before they must admit defeat, the White Helmets, who have performed entirely as the ambulatory servants for Al-Qaeda and other radical Islamist groups, that attacked the government of Syria beginning in 2011 at the orders of and the support of the United States, are now being taken in by various NATO countries where they will be allowed to resettle as regular citizens. Now, this concerns me primarily as a Canadian. Now, it is no secret the tremendous ties between Al-Qaeda and other groups that were operating inside of Syria as part of the uh, U.S. efforts to destabilize the country. Again and again, we found this ambulatory service following around the radical Islamic militant groups performing as their, like I said, ambulatory service. And now all of a sudden, and now that the last days of the radical Islamic fundamentalist groups are just about up, it's coming to an end, they're losing. Countries like Canada have decided to take in these radical Islamic fundamentalists as uh, somehow like a form of payment as shelter for these people who have clearly not only worked for U.S. imperialism, but has worked for the Wahhabist head shoppers inside of the country. Now, that very much concerns me that while we have the government and many other right-wing sources continually claiming that every Muslim that comes into the country is somehow a terrorist, we very clearly have very real terrorists who engaged in the ritualistic murders of civilians, who engaged in executions of people who were not soldiers but regular citizens, coming into the country and being declared citizens, given a free pass. So let me get this straight. We have to listen to the right-wing reactionaries screaming on and on about how every Muslim is a terrorist, yet we see these very same people championing the White Helmet, who are Islamic fundamentalists, who actually are terrorists, coming into Canada and being given a free pass into our society. Meanwhile, people who have been victims of wars, victims of terrible oppression, victims of murder and all kinds of other crimes, have to sit in line and wait and deal with the entire bureaucratic apparatus. But these people known throughout the world. This is not my opinion. This is a fact. This is a known fact that the White Helmets have staged uh, whole rescue operations to be used as propaganda by the West to attack the Assad government. They are known to have fabricated entire chlorine gas attacks, which had then been blamed on the Assad government. You remember the last chemical attack that was accused of Assad? And then mysteriously the next day, well, not the next day, but the day before international forces were to enter the country and to carry out an investigation, the U.S. decided to bomb the area and then bomb uh, another building that was responsible for making medications, claiming that this was in retaliation for the chemical attack while they demanded somebody come and investigate. And you, you notice that we don't hear anything in the media nothing in the media about what the outcome of that investigation was. That's because it didn't find anything. There was no chlorine gas attack. It didn't happen. That's essentially exactly what the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons determined. That's what they put out in their official statement. But the media completely denied it. Completely. Just complete blanket did not happen. We're not going to mention it. Lie by omission, the entire <laughs> typical imperialist approach. And that's what's kind of gotten my blood up. These people who are known, who have been recorded and broadcasted as having had committed murders against civilians deliberately, not the civilians caught in the crossfire, but bringing them in, decapitating them, carrying out blatant executions of them are being allowed into Canada and other places. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make an, I'm going to harp on Canada for this one because I am a Canadian and this directly affects me. You, Justin Trudeau, the guy who claimed to be so progressive. Oh, look at me. I'm a nice little skinny little liberal running around correcting people, telling them to use person 
such a progressive, is deliberately and knowingly allowing a terrorist organization who has a long history of committing crimes against civilians in the name of radical Islam into the country. And not only are they being allowed into the country, they are being brought in with a with red carpet treatment. You, Justin Trudeau, I would call you, I would call you a traitor if I thought you had any allegiance to the country anyway. There is no leader of Canada that's had any allegiance to Canada. It has an allegiance to the ruling class, to the capitalist class, and to carry out their interests. So I can't really call you a traitor. A traitor has to have sometime been on the side of the person that they betrayed. But since you were never on the side of the Canadian people to begin with, I can't really call you that. It's out of all the hysteria that we receive constantly about radical Islam and how we have to have more of a police state to try to patrol this. We have to justify and accept that uh, people of the Islamic faith are going to be targeted by police and other intelligence services just because of their faith. That this uh, stopping and harassing of a regular random people is supposed to take place for our safety while they make the biggest violation of our safety period, and that is deliberately bringing in a terrorist organization into this country. And that speaks absolute volumes of what the entire war on terrorism has been about. It has been nothing but a lie to subject to oppress a, uh, a section of the population and to get the rest of the population to go along with it, to justify imperialist expansion throughout the Middle East under the guise of fighting for freedom, under the guise of uh, fighting for democracy and secularism, etc. You know, when really calling the U.S. a secular society is pretty goddamn laughable. So, as you can tell, I'm pretty upset about this. I'm upset that a known, uh, I'm repeating myself, that a terrorist organization has been allowed into Canada and given red carpet treatment to bypass any checks or, and not, not that they would need to be done. We already know that they're a terrorist organization. We already know that they are criminals. We already know that they're war criminals. We already know that they have executed children, that they have executed civilians. It's already known. There isn't an investigation to be carried out. And they're being given a free hand. And I want that on the record right now. I want that to be known. So that when, when a radical Islamist attack happens in the future, and it has something to do with the white helmets, I want every single person, I know I'm not going to get it, but I want every single person who is responsible for bringing those pieces of human garbage into this country, I want every single one of them locked up, charged and taken to civil court for damages for what they have done. And then you know what I'm going to want? I'm going to want every single right-wing reactionary person, I'm stretching it a bit, to come in and apologize, make a public apology for supporting these people and to make a public apology to every single person that's harmed in that a terrorist attack for supporting bringing those pieces of garbage into this country. Never again is the Canadian government allowed to tell us about public safety, about how we have to accept certain limitations on our free, get the fuck out of here, to accept certain limitations on our freedom for the greater good to protect us from terrorism while they do this. Never again. And I, to, to finish off this video and saying everything that I've, I've already said, even mentioning how John McCain has been photographed with the head of ISIS and how ISIS is connected to the White Helmets as well. I mean, it's all been said a thousand times by any of us who dare to tell the truth about what's going on for any of us. You, you don't even have to have a YouTube channel and broadcast what's saying. Just anybody in a regular conversation on Facebook or any other social media that has pointed out what is blatantly true right there to the world. Just one last thing to say. Fuck you, Trudeau. Fuck you, you piece of shit. Because you just put this country in jeopardy. Now, I don't really have much sympathy for Canada because it is an imperialist power, but it pisses me off to no end 
the hypocrisy of a piece of garbage like you taking away our freedoms, telling us it's for safety and uh, uh, public safety and protection, and then you turn around and let a known terrorist organization come into this country with a free hand, and they're going to carry out attacks. I think that they definitely are. And when it happens, it's your fault, and I expect you to carry out some kind of self-criticism. And uh, there's a multitude of things I could think of that you could do as a form of self-criticism, but many of them uh, not appropriate for this kind of venue and maybe actions that, if promoted, YouTube wouldn't be very happy about. So I'm, I'm going to leave that part out. So from me... To you, Justin Trudeau, fuck you. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.